Hey there, welcome again. It's the Gun Cranks, the ruling oligarchs of the firearms industry. That's a big word. I know. I'm Guns Magazine editor <laughs> Brent Feed, along with American Handgunner. I'm going to talk over the top of them. You know, we do these openings cold, so they don't know what I'm going to say. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. We have Tom McHale, the editor of American Handgunner, and Roy Huntington, well-known gun crank and special assignments editor. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Peachy keen. Feeling very oligarchy today. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's well, medicine you can take for that. <laughs> really? I'm, okay. I got a whole list of them right here. <laughs> Why are we here today anyways? Anybody we know? are here because we came up, actually, Roy, this was your idea. What if you won or you had a $10,000 gift certificate to spend on just a gun? And it was funny, a few minutes ago, our producer, Nick, said, you know, like a Wonka bar. And I'm like, a Wonka bar? He goes, are you dead inside? I said, well, yes, <laughs> yes, yes I am. Soul. But I didn't realize he said Wonka like like Willy Wonka. So I, I have seen that movie, the original, and remember they came with the golden ticket in, in the chocolate bar. So imagine that's what happened to you. Say, oh, Snickers comes out and they have a golden ticket for $10,000 worth of firearms. So what, what would you do? What would you do? I'll open the bidding with, Roy, it was your idea. You And you probably have the biggest gun collection of, of all of us. What would you do? You know, when I first thought of that idea, I thought it was going to take me a long time to decide. And then I decided in about two seconds. <laughs> and and I, there's probably going to be groans, I think. But I would get a five and a half inch first generation Colt single action army engraved, deep engraving, more like chiseling uh, in a classic style. And it would be tuned by, unfortunately, Eddie Janis has passed away, but I would have loved it to, uh, for him to tune it. Silver plated with, they make this kind of aging that they put in the recesses of the engraving. And then of course, slim ivory grips. We might be a little bit over our ten thousand dollar budget, but, <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> but we, I could if I look long enough. You got to account for this get, year's inflation, man. Yeah, I <laughs> might on. be able to find something close to that. So that's what I would do for no reason other than oh, in forty five Colt, uh, other than it just it's well, duh. Art and it, yeah, it's just <laughs> sheer delight. Tom, go ahead. I'm still struggling with this one because I've narrowed it down to three approaches and um, maybe you guys can help me out here. Okay. So one, you know, and, and I kind of, my first impulsive thing was I need a 1911 made out of meteorite metal. So I was going to call the folks at Cabot Arms and because uh, they do that. They've That's got at right. least right. one. Right. Now I have no yeah. idea, seriously, where did they get meteorite? metal from a meteorite probably that giant crater in russia or something what's that thing called or an oligarch um, found it uh, maybe yeah. an oligarch yeah i got it for him yeah. see that's why see, but that tom was, you realize like an impulsive thing and then i'm like eh, i very cool and one of a kind for sure but it probably cost more than ten thousand dollars i was going to say that wouldn't even make the down payment and i probably wouldn't want to shoot it which violates my fundamental rule i'd want to shoot it Second choice might be like a collection of not not over the top 1911s, but nice 1911s, but in a broad assortment of calibers. Like first one I want is 357 Sig. Sig made them for a while. They were called the Nightmare, I believe. Does that sound familiar? But for some, I just like 357 Sig, so I'd want one of those. Probably have to pick up and tune up a 22 TCM. A couple nice conversion kits just for fun, you know. Maybe a less bear in forty-five. Uh, you know, I don't. So that was the second one, and the third one, I've always had an itch. I have an old kind of beat up Colt nineteen oh three, and I really would like to send that to the guys up at Turnbull and turn them loose with a giant blank check and say, "Make this epic." Yes. Yes. So that's that's Do the it. one I'll tell you. I'm kind of leaning towards that one. Almost like those Renaissance editions that Browning used to do, you know, like in a case. Oh, your gun has to be in a case, by the way, too. 
Oh yeah, well, I, and I wouldn't be putting one of those a TV set on top of it, Roy. So <laughs> please, we no, would keep God, this one no, iron sights. Please, no, <laughs> no red dots on 1903 Colts. <laughs> Is everyone out there listening? And it needs some nice leather too. So you know, I've run out of money. See, the budget's already gone. So no, you're you're within budget. You really are. Go buy some Snickers bars. Hey, Brent. <laughs> Your you turn. guys have champagne tastes and a yeah. decent budget, okay? I've come up with three things, and the first one is truly what I want. And you guys are going to groan, and then you're going to think, you know, that's actually pretty smart. You know what I want? Ammo. I want $10,000 worth of ammo. Yeah, well, of that's course, the four boxes of forty-five, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm decently stocked for the common stuff: nines, forty-fives, three hundred eight, two two three. I would get some more of that, but I would get all the other stuff, the 5.7, the 45 Colt, all the things that I have over there in the safe that I don't shoot very often because I've got a box of this or a couple of boxes of that. I'd buy a couple of cases of all these more unusual calibers so I could just you take the PS90 out and just go to town and see if that 50 round magazine actually will fire 50 rounds. So that truly is what I would do with 10 grand. Having said that, um, class three, I don't have any class three stuff. So, you know, it's hard to say exactly what you want because it's kind of what you can afford and what's available. And then the other thing would probably be, I don't have an original lettered Colt Peacemaker. So something from you know, first generation, uh, I would definitely want something that we can prove provenance of that I can say, you know, this shipped to Kansas and ended up, it was it sold through the hardware store at such and such. And we think this rancher owned it. I, I, that would really be cool. Doesn't even have to be a firing version, just something I could hold in my hand and, and know that. firing version or we'll never yep. talk okay. to you again. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but we're talking $10,000. No <laughs> if you want to say $100,000, <laughs> <laughs> I can find one that meets all those. You know, for some reason, the single action armies are kind of soft right now. I was looking at Rock Island Arsenal auction, and $2,500 to $3,000 can actually get you a fairly decent first or second generation single action. So, you know, and you know what? I thought I taught you better, too. What is this silliness about buying ammunition? I can't even say that word out loud. (laughs) Buy ammunition? You're a famous gun writer. You don't buy ammunition. I am <laughs> no. not a famous gun writer. I'm a... Wow. Get the gun to shoot the ammo. Cause you, I, I mean, Colt's not going to send us a fully engraved Colt single action. So uh, yeah. I support that, though. Get yourself a Colt single action. That's cool. See, now, but look at what just happened, though. Okay, you ready? What did I want? A nice engraved Colt single action. What did the editor of American Handgunner want? A nice engraved 1903 Colt. What did the famous editor of Guns Magazine want? Ammo. Ammo. No. <laughs> but then, but then he got his senses back and and, and he said, because it's whatever you say last is what you want. Oh, and okay. you said Colt single action. Yeah. So. A cool single action. I asked somebody that as a test before the show, and it was a younger guy, and I said, "What would you get if you could have ten thousand dollars?" And he went, he was going. I ate some. Boy, I could buy a lot of Glocks. <laughs> <laughs> See, a quantity wow. of, uh, didn't even cross my mind. That was not a quantity no. question right there. No. It was yeah. how and cool of, of a thing or two can you and get? And my hand you know? still stings from slapping <laughs> yep. him after he said that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you know how many high points you could buy for $10,000? Like, what, what do you do with a whole bunch of the same, the same gun, right? I don't they know. Yeah. It's, I have no idea because I've talked to people that do that, you know, and they'll say, "Well, I only have uh, eight Glock 19s." I, don't, I don't understand that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, I don't understand. That. I, I've got a lot of buddies that stockpile ARs, and they started back during the first assault weapon ban, and they bought all these lowers and uh, you know stuff that they thought they could turn around and sell. And they ended up not selling it, and I think it was mainly because they didn't want to, as opposed to nobody would buy it. And then they end up with all you know these receivers and everything, and it's like, well, I guess I'll have to build them. So now they've got you know 25 ARs that are identical in their safe, and it's like, do you ever shoot any of those? Well, I shoot that one. And <laughs> yep. the rest, 
what's what's the point here, kids? Well, you could sell those and you know buy ammo or buy more guns or whatever. Yeah, I could. I, I think that's know. hoarding. <laughs> it's hoarding. See, I, I, I go for the weird calibers of ARs. That's that's my thing. I could see if you did that. I knew a guy who was a grand collector, and he had this walk-in room thing, and he had about, I'm not kidding you, he had like 200 grands. And there was really not that much special about any of them. You know, they were nice cross-section, all the manufacturers and stuff like that, but they were pretty much all exactly the same. And I didn't really understand it, but the way he smiled, and he seemed to really enjoy it, so I guess that was good enough uh, for me. Wait, I have seen a fully engraved Glock, the grip frame and everything. And we're not talking with a melted, you know, in, I mean, cut engraving, scroll engraving, you know, like first class kind of stuff. And it's just like, I verped a little bit when I saw it. <laughs> let, <laughs> Sorry, let me guess, Clark the guy had the, had, yeah. had the Mr. T starter kit, the big medallion, looked like he came in second <laughs> in the Olympics. Yeah. yeah. I'm just guessing. Wait, can we, wow. I have to, one more thing before we leave, is that I did see a guy one time, he was a friend of mine, and he liked gold-plated guns, and he would buy guns and have them gold-plated. And not like flash, I mean, really high-quality, beautifully done, first class. And I, at first I kind of went, well, that's stupid, right? And then he pulled out a, a little... Uh, Walther, what's the little TP-22, is that what it was? The little, the little 22 all steel auto pistol they used to make? And it was gold plated, he had it in his pocket. And I went, wow, that looks uh. pretty good, you know? <laughs> and when he unzipped the case and he pulled out a HK P7, remember the old squeeze, squeeze cocker yep. guns? Engraved in gold plated. And then I thought, well, this is actually getting a little interesting. The man you know? with the golden guns. I know. Exactly. About <laughs> ten guns later, Colt Single Action Army, North American Arms, one of the little Derringers gold-plated. And what made it interesting was that it didn't look like like gold anodizing. You know what I mean? Yeah. This yeah. was gold. Oh. <laughs> and you could tell by looking at it. It was pretty cool. So uh, something for us uh, to aspire to. Yeah. Did, did you check? Did he have a third nipple? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. That's a good bit of movie <laughs> trivia you just pulled out right there. That's I'm right. impressed. I, right. I just watched The Man with the Golden Gun just about two okay. weeks ago. Yeah. Truly, I keep telling everybody, and I think it really horrifies Nick, our producer, I have not watched a recent movie in the last 15 years, but I'll watch The Man with the Golden Gun two or three times and then kind of cycle it out. So. All right, Nick, what would you do with $10,000? Uh, I would probably spend that on uh, maybe like an experience that I probably wouldn't have a chance to do uh, normally. Maybe like um, like a hunt in Africa or something. You know what? What a great idea. You know, I didn't even think of that, and I'm sure my uh, minions here didn't think of it either. But uh, a nice way to make ten thousand dollars last the rest of your life. I think we learned a lesson there, guys. Hey, let's make sure that we tell everybody to post what they would do with yeah, their Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Because I'm really curious to know. And and it can't be what we've we've already picked. So you got to, something else, something different, something crazy, something G-rated, hopefully. Well, that was, that was an interesting exercise, Roy. So appreciate you coming up with that one. Well, before we leave, of course, we have to ask, please subscribe to us down below. And we should have, I'm not sure, we got one of those little cool graphics like everybody does where a little hand comes up and it goes ding and all that stuff. We need one. So we'll, Nick, Nick and our production crew make that happen. So subscribe to us, leave comments. Uh, don't forget to check out GunsMagazine.com, AmericanHandgunner.com, AmericanCop.com, the Guns Magazine podcast available on all podcast directories. And we have special interest publications on Amazon and our websites. What's the hot ticket right now, Tom? The hot ticket right now is DIY gunsmithing. And uh, about the time you see this, give or take a little, we're going to have the Old West um, guns, gear, and history issue coming out too. Fun stuff, so keep an eye out. Excellent. Have to pick that up so I can look at the single actions and get saliva all over the pages. So, a couple of on be in there. <laughs> oh, no doubt. Well, on behalf of American Handgun Editor Tom McHale and Special Assignments Editor Roy Huntington, I'm Guns Magazine Editor Brent Wheat. We will see you next time. <laughs>